Hi and welcome back. It's time to create some scroll views. To create a scroll view in an GUI, you just select any component, right click, create, scroll view, like that. And you will see a pink outline that you can actually drag to resize, and that is the area of your scroll view. If you want to put something inside of it, you can do it like that, create a sprite, and you will notice that the sprite actually gets clipped by the edges of the scroll view. Of course right now the uh, area itself is not really interactable. If I hit play and I try to do something with it, nothing happens. That's because I'm missing two things. First is I need to attach a box collider so I can actually receive the events. And second now that I have a box collider, there's a lot more options in the attach menu. And I'm gonna need this drag scroll view. Now that I have a drag scroll view script on a collider, it will be possible to drag the scroll view with a mouse or with a touch event. Here's what it looks like with a bunch of items duplicated. I just took the same sprite and hit Ctrl D a couple times and positioned it accordingly. As you can see, now it looks like I'm actually scrolling through a bunch of items. If you want to make it possible to drag the scroll view anywhere, even if you uh, try to initiate the drag in between of items, or outside the immediate items area, you will want to attach a box collider to something. So here I select the scroll view, right click, create, invisible widget. Invisible widget is just a rectangle that doesn't actually draw anything. I'm going to position it where I want it to be. I'm also going to move it outside of the scroll view so it doesn't actually move with the scroll view. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a box collider to it and drag scroll view right here. For this drag scroll view, I'm going to have to specify the UI scroll view. Well, in this case, it automatically found it. And that's about it. Now I can just hit play and I will be able to press anywhere and start dragging the scroll view. Now here's an important thing to know that I briefly mentioned in uh, one of the previous tutorials. Here the container, the invisible widget, is using a depth of 1. However, sprites within the scroll view are using depth of 0. So at first you might think that, oh hey, the container is actually intercepting the events. Well, let's see. I'm gonna get rid of this component, drag scroll view, hit play, and try to drag. It still works, which means that the container is not getting the events. The items are getting the events. The reason for that is because the scroll view has its own panel. This panel is set to have a depth of one and UI root has the first panel, which has depth of zero. Since one is higher than zero, first events will go to the scroll view, and only then will they go to the UI root. So the question then becomes, how do you actually intercept the events? Say, for example, you have a loading screen, and you want to intercept uh, all the events that are coming to your uh, user interface. It's actually quite simple. You need to create a new panel. So in this case, I have the UI root selected. Right click, create, panel. This panel, by default, has a depth of one higher than all the other panels. So it's got a depth of two. Now if I happen to move the container widget underneath this panel, this panel with a depth of two will receive events first. Now if I hit play and try to drag, nothing is going to happen. If you ever run into this situation with NGUI where you're not sure why uh, something is not getting the events that you expect, select the camera that sees your widgets, in this case it's the UI camera directly under the UI root, and choose the debug option right here. With debug enabled, when you hit play, NGUI will tell you exactly what is underneath the mouse. As you can see, as soon as I hover over a collider, it shows last hit, UI root, panel, container. And if I happen to disable the container, which is here, now if I hover over it, 
it will uh, tell you that the sprite is now underneath, which is probably what you would expect in this case. Speaking of extra panels though, extra panels are also quite useful if you want to ensure that something is going to be on top of something else. So if I wanted to create something that is on top of a scroll view, then I would make sure that it is added to a panel that has a depth higher than the scroll view. So right click, create sprite, and this sprite is actually going to appear on top of the scroll view. Here, let me choose a different sprite so you can actually see. See how it actually blocks the scroll view? That's because it's on top. If I want it to be on the bottom, I'm just going to move it to be underneath the UI root instead. And there it is. Now it is underneath the scroll view. Always remember, panel depth is higher than the widget depth, and you'll be fine. Alright, it's time to make it possible to drag things out of the scroll view. In order to make it possible, I'm going to add a new script called drag and drop item. This script is what makes it possible to drag the item around, like so. Now by default it remains a part of the scroll view, so it gets clipped and I can actually release it and drag the scroll view as before. That's about it though. Can't do much else. In order to make it uh, possible to drag it outside of the scroll view, I need to attach drag and drop root script to a panel that we created earlier. Panel that has a depth higher than that of the scroll view. So what happens when you do this is when you hit play and try to drag it outside, the item gets reparented to be underneath that uh, drag and drop root which happens to be on a, a panel that has a depth higher than the scroll view. So it becomes above the scroll view and thus it makes it possible to drag it outside of the scroll view to begin with. Of course now if I hit the release button all of a sudden it's going to disappear. Technically it's still there it just happens to be way over here. The reason it ended up there is because I have no positioning scripts inside the scroll view so when I actually release the item it just stays exactly where I dropped it. But if I was to add a new game object underneath, Alt-Shift-N is the shortcut to add a child to the selected object by the way, and I was to call it grid and attach a grid component to it, this will make it possible for the grid to automatically position the children underneath of it. Right now, if I happen to right-click on a grid and say Execute, it will reposition everything underneath it. However, it's uh, too far apart. In order to make it closer together, I'm just going to reduce the cell width and height, right-click, Execute again, and that's a little bit better. And now, if I try to do the same thing, let's see, this item does not have the drag and drop item. Now it does. So I hit play, try to drag it outside, and then it automatically returns to the end of uh, the scroll view. And I can get to it and drag it outside again. Of course it's kind of difficult to tell that I'm dragging something out of it because the items automatically snap right away and it's not uh, something that is pleasing to the eye necessarily. I can actually make it better by enabling smooth tween on the UI grid object. Now if I hit play and when I try to drag something out of it you'll notice that everything is smoothly animated. Furthermore, I can change the arrangement or rather the sorting to be horizontal as well, matching the arrangement. Now if I hit play and try to do release it, it will go exactly where I dropped it. I can also associate a scroll bar with this uh, scroll view. To do that I just drag in a scroll bar, select the scroll view and reference this horizontal scroll bar right here underneath the horizontal field. Now that I've done that, if I hit play, 
and try to drag things out, you'll notice that the scroll bar updates automatically. And likewise, I can just move the scroll view using the scroll bar. I should probably mention that as you position things inside the scroll view like that, it's also generally a good idea to right click the scroll view and choose reset clipping position right here. This will adjust both the scroll bar's initial value and the content's initial position based on the content origin specified right here. So here it is using the top left. However, since the scroll view is horizontal, it is ignoring the top part and only setting it to be on the left. Likewise, if I was to choose, say, uh, center, you will notice that it updated automatically and now everything begins in the center of the scroll view. Same thing with right. Now it will be on the right. But I'll just leave that on left. You may have noticed a bad side effect of uh, everything we've just done. If I happen to try to scroll the scroll view, it's not possible anymore because it keeps trying to drag the items instead. You can actually fix that quite easily. Simply select the items and modify the restriction right here on the drag drop item. Make it vertical, which means that it, it will be possible to drag the item when you drag it vertically, but not horizontally. So here, let me try to play it again. Now if I drag left to right, it is possible to drag the scroll view, but if I try to drag up, it will let me drag the items outside of it. Well, it's all great and all, but how do we actually drag items outside and make them stay there? Well, it's actually quite simple. I'm going to select the root and add a new sprite. Say, for example, this is where I want to uh, be able to drop the items. For this sprite, I'm going to adjust the depth a little bit and add a box collider. Attach box collider. Now all that's missing is drag and drop uh, container script right here. Now that it has a container, it will be possible to drop items onto it. Let's try it. Hit play. Drag the item off. Oops, I need to drag up and drop it in the container. There you go. It is now a part of the container. Of course, it's not clip because there is no panel, but it's still possible to drag it. If I drag it outside here, nothing happens. If I drag it here, I can drop it. Drag and drop container has a reparent target field that actually lets you redirect where the items go when they're dropped onto the container. So let me just add a new game object here in the middle of nowhere and uh, give it a grid component. I'm going to attach, uh, position it right here. Nothing special. For this sprite, I'm going to reference this object that I just created as the reparent target. And now if I hit play and try to drop things here, they will automatically go up there instead. Oh, and of course the reason why they end up up there is because I happen to uh, have a grid there that I added this thing. Likewise, if I enable the smooth twin and hit play, now they will navigate to their destination smoothly. Of course, I can take it one step further. I can take the scroll view and effectively duplicate it, moving it up here instead. I'm also going to get rid of all the items underneath. Instead, I'm going to take the background sprite that I have here, duplicate it and move it up there. On this object, I'm also going to attach a collider. Alt-Shift-C is the shortcut, by the way. Or you can just right-click and attach a box collider. But anyway, now that I have a collider, I'm going to use a drag and drop container on it so that it's possible to drop items onto it. And I'm going to redirect items to this duplicated uh, uh, scroll views grid that I specified. So now that I've done that, it is effectively possible to 
drag items from one scroll view into the next one. Oh, no. Now the reason it's messing up right now is because I happen to du have duplicated the scroll view, but uh, they're both referenced in the same exact scroll bar. I should probably fix that. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, scroll bars reference. Now, if I hit play, it should work better. Of course, the reason it's going back here is because I'm dropping the item on top of other items, and those items don't have a drag drop surface on top of them. Only the actual uh, box collider behind them does. If I reparent this scroll view to be a child of the background, then it should actually work though. Let me try that. Make a child, hit play. Yep, now it works. So as long as there's a drag and drop container in uh, the hierarchy somewhere, it'll just magically work. In this case, it doesn't because I'm missing the drag and drop container again. Let's fix that. Box glider drag and drop container and likewise parent the scroll view to be underneath it. Let's hit play, drag items there, everything works, drag them back and it works, but I forgot to reference the reparent target. Whoops! Let's change that. Grid needs to be the reparent target underneath the drag and drop container so that all the items go underneath the grid. Try this again, works, drag and back, also works. If you want to know more about drag and drop, I suggest you look at the 11th example that comes with Angui. It's similar to what we have just created, except it gives you the ability to also create 3D objects by dropping things onto a cube from a scroll view. And uh, you can actually examine how it's done by simply opening up example drag and drop item script and looking at what happens inside. Now here's an important thing to know about the event system in Angui. It is not limited to just the user interfaces. You can also use it for 3D objects. In this case, I happen to have a 3D object cube in the scene that is seen by the main camera, which has a depth of zero. And then on top of it is the user interface seen by the camera, which has a depth of one, which means that the user interface is obviously on top of the game camera. So, by default, if I happen to click on a cube, nothing is going to happen. Because there is one important thing missing. On the main camera, I also need to attach a UI camera script, which is the NGUI event system here. Once you have the NGUI event system slash UI camera attached, the cube will be capable of receiving the events. So if I happen to attach a script on it, that happens to listen to events inside, like so. If I now hit play and click on a cube or do something else, you'll notice that the debug log is now full of events. However, if I happen to drag in a button into the scene and position it somewhere above the cube, and then I hit play, if I happen to click on a button, you may notice that events do not propagate down to the queue because the button intercepts them. And GUI's events always go to the first object that uh, has a collider attached. In this case, it is the button. However, as soon as I hover over it, it is now the cube. Alright, well, that's about it for this video. Hopefully, by now, you should have a pretty good understanding of how to use Angui. In the next video, I'm going to cover more advanced concepts. I'm going to talk about scripting, uh, resolution-dependent user interfaces, and a couple of other things. You can click the link in the top right corner in order to go there. Thanks for watching.